Well, the man's name was Jack Fox, and he was here in retirement. And he made a confession. He said, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I worried about what people would think of me. When I was in my 40s and 50s, I didn't much care what they thought about me, just so they thought about me. Now I'm in my 60s, I've discovered they weren't thinking about me at all. I'm not concerned about whether you thought of me or whether you will or won't. I'm concerned about something else. Indeed, my hope is that in life's unfolding experiences, be they moments of ecstasy or moments of agony, or even those lengthening moments of routine day-to-day -day living. I'm simply hopeful that you will be reminded every now and then, at crucial times, no less, of great truths that we've experienced together. Let me mention one. I must have mentioned it a hundred times in your case. But it's a new truth to someone who's never heard it. Everyone is important. Everyone is important. In James Wilson Johnson's magnificent poetic sermon out of the black tradition, one that he called the creation, after he has described in his own inimitable way how God created heaven and earth, he says, Then God walked around and God looked around on all that he made. Looked at his sun, looked at his moon, and looked at all his little stars. He looked at all his world, with all its living things. And God said, I'm lonely still. And then God sat down. On the side of a hill where he could think, by a deep, wide river, God sat down. And with his head in his hands, God thought and thought till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God stooped to play. And by the bank of the river he kneeled himself down. And there the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky. And from the stars to the most far corner of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand, this great God, like a mammy bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust. Falling over lump clay to be shaken in his own image. And then into it he blew the breath light. Man became a living soul. Everybody's a wolf. We've got new neighbors down by the parsonage. You've seen them around town. Persons who uh, can't communicate well, can't hold a job, can't read, can't write, don't know how old they are. Some people call them meet and greet people. Some people call them frickin' frack. Their names are Leonard and Frank. And they're important people. And yesterday, when I was privileged to visit their 94-year-old mama, and I came back to see them on the porch, they asked me, 
if I prayed for her. Everybody's important. Is this any way to say goodbye? Well, I think it is. In a world teeming with bodies, overpopulation, you know. In a world enamored with gadgets. In a world that is absolutely compelled by bottom lines. You and I need to hear that we are important. Each and every living soul. I think we need to be reminded now and again, maybe this is one of those times, of God's approach to us because we're so important. There's a lot of holy things in the church. Holy Bible, holy altar, holy spirit, holy marriage, holy baptism, holy communion, the holy life of Jesus ever before us. Did you know that all of that holiness is for the human family? God enters into intervention in His holy ways because of humanity. Indeed, God so loved the world collectively, individually. He gave His only Son. But whoever believes in Him will never perish, but have everlasting life. Living soul. The living soul named Jesus died for our sins of not understanding that we and everybody else is important. But he's alive now. Raised from the dead. To say to us again in vivid, vibrant, visceral fashion, all who die shall live. God's approach to us is that sacrificial way to say we're important. Oh, how much He cares for you. Believe then, and oh, God help our unbelief that God is never out to get us because of our sin. He is out to so that our soul will be victorious. Is this any way to say goodbye? Well, I think it is. We need to be blessedly assured that the one who came from the ivory palace did not come to destroy us or to put us down, which is another way to destroy it. Came to deliver us. To lift us up which is the way to save us. I think there will be times when we need to be reminded of another truth we've shared from time to time. Namely, we need to be reminded of our holy connection. Why do I love you? Because you're my brother and you're my sister. And if God loves me, I want to love you. For God loves you too. Just like me. In the year 1782, an Englishman named John Fawcett, a staunch supporter of John Wesley, wrote soulfully and beautifully of this absolutely ingenious interlocking of individual Christian people. Blessed be the tie that binds. Our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like that love. We share each other's woes. Our mutual burdens bear. And often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. When we are sung apart, it gives us in pain. But we shall still be joined in all and hope to meet again. Is this any way to say goodbye? I think it is. Because each of us is a gift to all of us. And all of us are gifts to each of us. One more truth and then I'll 
I hope that in days to come we will be reminded of one more worthy and wondrous truth. And it is this. The paths of our lives toward the horizons of hills and hopes. The paths of our lives along the plains of everyday life which can sometimes become boring and sometimes monotonous and sometimes even depressing. The paths of our lives, yes, on the final journey into the sunset of our lives. The paths of our lives are leading us, leading all of us to a divine destination. Is this not what Carl Sandburg had in mind and wanted to convince us of when he wrote his poem called Olympic? Listen to this ancient poet Lord of America. I'm riding on a limited, limited express, one of the crack trains of a nation. Hurtling across the plains in the blue haze and dark air go 15 all-steel coaches holding a thousand people. All the coaches shall be scrapped and rust. And all the men and women laughing in the diners and sleepers shall pass to ashes. I ask a young man in the smoker where he is going. And he said, oh my God. Now you and I are not limited by that kind of thinking. We know that who we are now is not yet what we can be. We know that what we do now is not the end of our doing. We can do more, perhaps even greater things in days ahead. Can you not? You are not limited in Omaha or Williamstown or Dallas, or Hinton, or any place else, even alive. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say to you, remember we are someone going somewhere to meet the one who made us someone, to be with the one who came to us in the person of Jesus Christ to save us, to sustain us, and to safely take us across the great divide when our path of this life is over. Is this any way to say divide? Oh, I think it is. I think it is. I love the day. I love the night. But a day is coming when there will be no night. That day, our destination day, Oh, what a day it's going to be. When our Jesus, we shall see. When we look upon his face, the one who saves us by his grace, and when he takes us by the hand and leads us through the promised land, what a day! Oh, what a day! In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.